All right, welcome to the solution to one of your challenges here. Uh, the first part of the challenge was getting the player to toggle rocks versus arrows. We'll see here in the player create method, you are given a variable called selected. One, let's say for rocks, two for arrows. All we have to do is make this toggle back and forth. Very popular routine in any type of program. To do this, when we hit the T key, have a little bit of code, and I'm just going to ask, using an if and an else, if selected is 1, then I'm going to switch selected to 2. And then I can follow up with uh, one or two choices here. I could say else, if selected is 2, turn selected to 1. It's important that you have the else here. Let's say selected is currently 1. It'll turn it to 2. That's good, and we're done. It doesn't bother going down because this is the else statement. Okay, we're all finished. But let's say you had done this by accident. You were at 1. You turn to 2. If you just have a regular if there, it's going to ask that if again. And then it's going to say if selected as 2, which it is because you just turned it to 2, it's going to turn it back to 1. Okay, that's one of the reasons, the importance for the else if statement here. The other thing we can note here is you really only have two choices, right? You either have one or you have two being the values. If selected as one, switch to two. We can get away with not even asking here. We could just say else, turn it to one, right? There is no other choice. If it's not one, we know it's going to be two. So when you have one or the other, usually you see if and else. Yeah. If we give this a little try here to make sure this works, we'll see the number toggling, and then we're going to change the graphics. So as I hit the T key here, you can see that 1 and 2 switching nicely. Yeah, so that's good. Now instead of saying 1 or 2, we want that to say rocks or arrows. So this is handled inside of the draw object. And right now, we're just doing a nice, simple drawing out of the variable. What I'm going to do instead is just split this up into an if statement. And this is really useful in the draw event. When you want to draw things out, there is a little user interface. Is It's okay to ask if statements in here. So let's see here. We'll say if selected as 1, I'm going to just straight out draw. Selected, I'll just make this rocks. Else, here I'll put the if statement. Ah, forget it. I'll just, I know it's either one or the other. Else, selected as two. And it's basically this exact same line. Copied out, except that's going to be arrow. Notice the coordinates, exactly the same. You're either going to have this or you're going to have that being drawn, right? You're not going to have each one. And remember, there was one extra curly brace in there. Let's not forget it. That was with our with. That's with our if. That's with our else. And you know what? I messed up there. Good point. Just an else. Okay, perfect. If selected as one, draw rock, else I have the arrows. If you did want to have a whole bunch of weapons, you'd probably want to continue with else if statements on and on here. Okay, so that's that part done. Give it a little go, test it out. Now, of course, I'm still just firing arrows. Let's head to the space bar and fix what I'm firing. Player, spacebar. So here, always making an arrow. I'm going to show you two ways to solve this one here. Here's one way, which is a bit more beginner. Before I fire, I actually have to ask about the selected variable. All right? Find out what it is. So select it as one. Do that. I think I'd actually said that I would make this a rock. So let's change that to rock. Else, 
I'm going to put the if in here just for this one. Else if selected is 2. I'm going to copy all this. And this time it's object arrow. So maybe you can make rocks fire slower. Arrows fire faster. You know, that's the big difference. Okay, and this should run okay. So a nice standard chain, right? If selected is 1, do that. Else... If selected is two, do this. Now I'll test this, and then I'll give you a tiny improvement that you can make to that code. So it looks like it's going okay as I select things. Perfect. Now that that part's done, what we're going to look at is actually the last part you were asked to do, and it had something to do with the ammo. Okay, make ammo a factor here. They just can't fire the rocks and the arrows endlessly. So you'll see here that it's already been coded in in the create method that it keeps track of how many rocks they have and how many arrows they have. Okay, that's good. When they pick stuff up, you'll see that they're given the ammo. And same thing with the rocks. So all we really have to do here is take care of don't fire unless they have enough ammo of the right type. So it's going to be perfect for using the if with our and statements. So in the space bar, We'll just go back to the firing code, and there's a bit more of a condition here. Just because they've selected the rock doesn't mean they can fire the rock. Okay. We have to add a little extra. We say if they've selected one and the number of rocks they have is bigger than zero, then they can fire a rock, and of course add the all important rocks equals rocks minus one, so the value of rocks goes down. Same thing with the arrows here. Okay, there's a double condition here. Not just they select a two, it's if they select a two and the number of arrows that they have is bigger than zero. Fire the arrow and arrows is arrows minus one. Now I'm just going to double check the name. Rocks, arrows. Rocks, arrows. Looks good. Okay, always make sure names match or obviously code doesn't work. So that's back to what we had there. Okay, let's give this a go. Let's get rid of all my rocks. I pick up more rocks. Yeah, it gave me a few more. Run out. A few more. That's good. Switch to arrows. No more arrows. Can't fire. Pick up the arrows. It gives me a few more arrows to fire. Perfect. That's that for that challenge. So you had a few ifs and elses and ands in there. Okay, hopefully you got that on your own. If not, right, try to do this one on your own again until you can uh, feel comfortable and do it all by yourself. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.